Curry, and I'm here with um, the fire chief from Riverside, and Kira is here to talk about what's going on in the community on the fire and rescue EMT side. Um, Kira is is the girl, is the gal in charge of her department, and um, I wanted you to hear from her because we don't often get the backstories of the people that are in the trenches, in the field, working. This is a very interesting time. And I love being able to tell a Tacoma story about what's really going on. So you wanna introduce yourself, Kira, and, and just tell everybody exactly what you do. Absolutely. So again, my name is Kira Thirdfield, and I have the pleasure of being the fire chief of Riverside Fire and Rescue, uh, which is just between Puyallup and Tacoma on River Road. Uh, our department uh, is, is a little bit unique in our county, uh, which is one of the draws for me, as we have about 40 to 45 volunteer firefighters and EMTs, and then uh, just three full-time staff that um, that run the whole place. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a cool department. Yeah, and you're not only the fire chief, but you also do wear several hats. What other hats do you wear, Kara? I get to wear them all. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty young. I'm not ready to just sit behind a desk. Uh, so I often, for instance, today, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on the fire engine drive, firefighting the EMT. Uh, I get to do it all, which, which I think makes me better at my job yeah. uh, as far as running the administrative side. So. Yeah, so you're the head chief and you get to do all these other things, which makes you a very talented person. Um, so this is just an interesting time. Um, I, we don't have to explain to the community, you know, how interesting a time this is. But as a fire chief, you've never had to do this before. We've never had a, a widespread virus that has attacked our community. So how do you even go about planning for something like that? Or how, where do you... Where do you even start when you're faced with something so different and complicated? Yeah, it, and it is. It's very different than anything we've ever seen before. Um, but at the same time, emergency services plan for the worst, you hope for the best. So while this may not be identical um, to something that we have planned for, it's very similar. And we have a lot of systems in place, um, you know, with, with Pierce County, the state and everything like that. So we have planned for this and we've had a few scares of this type of thing before. Uh, so it's not something that we're totally foreign to, but uh, it definitely is the first time for, for us dealing with something like this before. Uh, but I think overall we've done really well. Pierce County, you know, mostly due to the support of the community and then following stay at home orders and stuff, uh, you know, we've done very well and, and we just kind of sit in that planning stage, which is where we want to be. Yeah, well, I can only imagine that you've gone through training that have probably taught you tactics for probably things that may be considered worse than this. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fire chief, but I can only imagine that you talk about all sorts of complicated, complicated situations and you're, you know, having to force to think through how you would respond to it. Are you, um, so I don't, I don't know the answer to this. Are you busier than you normally are or are things, what's it like over there? We're finding ourselves, uh, originally, a couple weeks ago, we were a little bit slower than normal, uh, based on last year, and we're starting to kind of, kind of creep back up to our normal for uh, the last three-year average. And I would say, uh, from what we can tell, people are utilizing their doctors uh, online, consulting mm. on some of the smaller, lower acuity things. So, we have seen a decrease in the lower acuity, but definitely we're holding steady in some of the higher acuity, you know, heart attacks and things like that. I would say that they were pretty normal. But we've seen so people and, are adapting um, to what they're learn, they're relearning how to access their doctors, and they're yeah. adapting. Is that what you're seeing? Absolutely, and I think that's a such a valuable thing because your doctor is your long-term care. We just right. provide a band-aid in a lot of ways, whereas if you can establish a good relationship with your doctor, it can be a preventative uh, measure. Huh, so that would be a positive when we're looking for positives. That would yeah. be a positive thing that's coming out of this is just having to adapt and learn new ways of being able to communicate, which then takes some of the burden, what I'm hearing, 
off of your shoulders, right? Off of ours, off of the healthcare system, the emergency rooms, uh, off of taxpayer dollars, you know, it, it, it helps all around. Yeah. I know um, the community, I know you're in a, you know, somewhat of a nice tight knit community. How do you see the community rallying and just from your vantage point, what's happening over there for people helping out? It's been pretty unbelievable. Uh, you know, we've always had a very supportive uh, community in our fire district. But it's just, you can tell even, you know, when we go in public or we're doing gas or, or something like that, people are just, they look at you a little different, give you the kind of a head nod or just, you know, thank us for our service just so that we know that, that they're thinking of us. Yeah. Uh, we've had several members of the community come down to our station and, and try to drop off masks and other people. They just had laying in the garage, just like one box, you know, and it's just, it means a tremendous amount this morning. Uh, we just had one of our, our citizens that, that came down and, and said, hey, you know, I was feeling really guilty. We got these stimulus checks and, and you know, we don't really need them. Uh, and she donated five hundred dollars to our organization. Oh my gosh! You know that's, that's amazing. That's pretty, incredible. that's pretty incredible. That is incredible. I bet I can only imagine that that's the fuel that probably keeps you guys going because you're. Oh, I mean, you yeah. you are our heroes, and we know that you're the boots on the ground and you can now the imagine that our heroes. Yeah, they, I mean just with everything staying at home like you know we're not the the fire department's not the one driving those cases down uh it's the community and they're right now i think they're rocking it i know that we're just we're so appreciative of what you do and it's heartwarming to hear the community is rallying and that you're seeing you know you're seeing that you know from a, a first vantage point view and what if people want to do something Kira what what can we do? Uh, well I mean there's a lot of things you can do obviously the number one thing is stay home stay healthy follow all the guidelines you've been seeing on the CDC um, there are donation points that you can drop off PPE uh, personal protective equipment masks and stuff like that uh, through Pierce County Department of Health has a list of them that's great. You kind of try to funnel it through one or two organizations and then disperse it out where the need is the greatest at that given time. Uh, and the other thing that you can do is donate blood. Uh, you know, medical emergencies haven't stopped, uh, but people kind of are having that fear of going out and it makes it a little bit harder to go out there and donate blood. And I understand that, but uh, let's not forget about, uh, forget about that as well. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it just so happens that we're, we have a story to follow this, um, this week uh, where the church that I attend has donated their building for the blood bank to come in and take over their building because a lot of sites are canceling. So um, I'm glad you brought that up. So different ways to go on the Pierce County, um, which, which website do they go to? You can go to the Pierce County Department of Health. Okay, okay and find out where to donate and how to help. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kira, for your time. We applaud you. I'm sure if I had our whole audience behind me right now, we'd be standing ovation, standing up and, and just giving you a rip roar and um, thank you. So thank you, I appreciate you.